Tom Moore, Chris Whaley, um, uh, these guys, it was like two other guys that had, a, um, I don't know if they have a Zoom meeting or a podcast or what they, what they have going on, but they talked about how, excuse me, they talked about how Michael Jordan um, used to treat Kwame Brown. And, and and when I heard it, it, it made me look at Michael Jordan different because I did watch the Last Dance, and I and I and I heard the way um, certain people looked at Michael Jordan and how Michael Jordan kind of walked around with an extra chip on his shoulder, as he should in ways. But I did also hear the people that they kind of felt disrespected at times. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kwame Brown said he was drafted by the Washington Wizards. Also, he was drafted by the Washington Wizards, but really in actuality, he was supposed to be traded. For Elton Brand. I don't know how many of my subscribers actually follow basketball and sports, or did they just catch wave of Kwame Brown from, you know what I mean, the uh the positivity that he's putting out. But a long story short, with the sports world, because I got a deeper message that I'm getting to. Kwame Brown Kwame Brown was supposed to be traded for Elton Brand. Jordan didn't really want Kwame Brown, um, is what Kwame Brown said. And long story short, somehow Elton Brand ended up getting um staying on the team he was at, and, and Kwame Brown ended up staying with the Washington Wizards. Now Everybody know when these guys get drafted, a lot of these guys have a um not a hazing process, but like the rookies carry the bag, the rookies might gotta bring donuts, the rookies might gotta have, you know, an initiation, so to speak. You know, when you're a rookie on the team, the veteran guys, especially somebody as big as Michael Jordan, I can imagine and I can see how he would um uh, had a rookie doing things that other guys on the team might not necessarily have to do like go get us lunch for the day and just you know just different things like that or, or carry my gym bag you know just stuff that's really pushing the envelope but at the same time you're like okay he the rookie you know this is his initiation we can see that and we can see how jordan maybe could take it just a little bit further because he's michael jordan he's the one that everybody seen seen and looked at as the greatest of all time and the guy that was gonna come in and show the wizards how to get to the playoffs we all can understand that everybody can understand that okay right now so Jordan took it a step further. Eton Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, that's his name. He used to play with Jordan and Kwame Brown and these guys with the Washington Wizards. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, he talked about how Michael Jordan took a ball. Well, first he talked about how. I'm going to get to that. Y'all wait a minute. I'm going to get to that because that's what I really want to want to talk about. But he also talked about how Kwame Brown, they would come to the arena and Kwame Brown would be dripping sweat. <laughs> and he'd be tired. And he'd be like, well, what's going on with you, Kwame? Like, what? what, what? Like, what, what are you so damn tired? Why are you so here so early dripping all this sweat for? He said, man, they've been working me out. Basically, they've been working me out all, all morning. Like, before the game, they would work the man out, work Kwame Brown out for two hours. And I'm talking about intensive, uh, extensive um, workouts. Basically, having a man tired, having him sweating before games and wore out. So when it comes time for the game to start, they get him to check in the game. This man is already extremely tired. Everybody else coming with fresh legs. He come with legs that been in an extensive, an extensive workout before the game even got started. So you setting a young man up. That's not teaching a man work ethic. Okay, we understand work ethic. You want to come in, you know what I'm saying, early, get you some shots up. But you shouldn't be dripping sweat, running sprints, working extremely hard before the game. So when they put you in the game, you all wore out, you're tired. And it's like, okay, so now when this productivity, when this productivity is not high, it's like, oh, he was a bust. It's kind of like they're setting you up to fail. You know what I'm saying? And these guys got you coming in, working hard, and um, and, and you the rookie. So when you come into the game and check into the actual basketball game, only thing we know is when the cameras start rolling. We ain't seen, we haven't seen all before the game how hard they've been working this young man out and getting him wore out and getting him tired and then checking him in the game. And his his numbers is down and he's tired. And they're doing all this because, you know, uh, uh they're trying to make him look, uh, what Kwame Brown say, they're trying to make him look like a bus or look like a guy that, that um, that's not a good basketball player because because Michael Jordan wanted them to get Elton Brand anyway. Okay, so follow me to this point now. Ethan Thomas talked about um, Ethan Thomas or whatever his name is talked about how Michael Jordan took a basketball, kicked it up in the stands, and they said it went way far in the stands. You know what I'm saying? And he told Kwame Brown, "Go get the ball and, and, uh, and uh, try try not to miss the bus." Now, now pause. This is a 17-year-old guy coming into the league. This is a guy that's young enough to be probably Michael Jordan's nephew. I ain't going to say his son because I know Michael Jordan probably was late 30s or something like that. And, and a guy 18, 19, he could have been his son, but he more like a nephew type of age. Michael Jordan should have took that young man, brought him in, even if you didn't want him or you thought that you wanted another guy. You wanted Elton Brand. You wanted whoever you wanted. 
you should have took that look out on your wing, even if you didn't want him and say, you know what, I'm, now we're going to have some rookie uh, initiation type of process, but I'm still going to treat you at, like a young man. You are another young black man that's trying to provide for your family and trying to make your way in this league, and I'm Michael Jordan. I have became to be whoever I am, and if I check out today, I'm still going to be Michael Jordan tomorrow to the world and to the basketball world. I'm still going to be one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. You don't take a basketball and kick the ball all the way up in the stands and make him go get it like like they said he, he told him, like, basically go fetch the ball. That's something that's like you overstepping respect at that point. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan taking that ball and kicking it in the stands and telling him and trying not to miss the bus. You showing that you had some real venom to that young man. That's not that's nothing to do with uh, initiation or hazing or not hazing, but like initiation of you know making a rookie just pay his respect and pay his dues. That's nothing to do with it. That's taking a man and saying, "I think nothing of you," and I'm gonna take this ball and I'm gonna kick it up in the stands and I'm gonna make you go get it because you young and I'm Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan has shown time and time again. That he has very little respect for things that's going on in our community as well. You know, Michael. they say Michael Jordan owned prisons. Black people, black men, black people are, are, are dominating the populations of prisons. You know what I'm saying? And I can't knock his big business acumen. I can't knock that. I can't take that from him. But also when, we, when, he, when these guys lose their lives out here on the streets, Michael Jordan never speak on it. He didn't believe politics would get mixed with sports. Okay, I can give him that. I understand he has a lot of businesses and he don't want to mess up his businesses. But at the same time, um, you see when, when when the black community put a lot of pressure on Michael Jordan, it's the only time that he would even donate to um, different things that post to raise awareness to, you know, violence in the black community and different things like that. Now, for him to take that ball and kick it up in the stands and treat Kwame Brown like he was less than human, that's something that shows the character of a man. You can give a man billions of dollars. You can get multi-billionaire. It don't matter. It still don't change the integrity of a man. You see these young men out here today. They killing each other over the new Michael Jordan tennis shoe. The only thing he's doing is bringing out the same ones over and over and over. He bringing out the same shoes. Oh, he's not even taking time to create new Michael Jordan shoes. He's bringing out the same one. And these young guys out here killing each other for the new Michael Jordan shoe. If it come out, they got a line for to be able to get the Michael Jordan shoes. These guys waiting in line for it. Some guy try to rob him for it. Guy kill him for it. All for some Michael Jordan tennis shoes. And he comes out and says nothing in regard to these families that's losing their life to these young men that's doing this, this small minded. They don't understand it's all materialistic things. He's not even coming out and speaking for these young men and say, you know what? Hey, y'all, I appreciate you guys supporting my shoe. It was meant, you know what I'm saying, to be an immortal type of shoe, a shoe that I'm glad my community and guys that look like my children that look like me are happy to have or happy to wear. But at the same time, it's just a shoe, guys. I don't want y'all to kill each other for it. Why not bring out more of the shoes? He will only make so many shoes. So these guys will be, I have to have a Jordan shoe because they're going to run out. They're going to run out. The Jordan shoe is going to run out. So they're getting there. They're getting in these lines. They're fighting in these lines. We've seen many times where guys have been killed in a mall or outside the mall for the shoe. And he speaks nothing to these guys or to these families or even fund the funeral for the guy that lost his life behind the Michael Jordan shoe. Nothing. We've seen that. Why not put out more of the Michael Jordan shoes so these guys don't have to kill each other for them? It's enough in there for everybody. If you got the money to buy, go buy it. He don't do nothing alone in these regards. So to hear that story in which he kicked the ball up in the stands and basically made Kwame Brown go fetch the ball. And I heard another guy, I believe it was Chris Whaley. I believe that's his name. He even confirmed the story. So all y'all remember Michael Jordan did do that. And it was just like, it was like, it wasn't about him being a young man no more. It was about disrespect at that point. A young guy coming into the league, 17 years old, that's trying to provide for his family, that's trying to buy his mother a house, that's trying to provide for his family, maybe his brothers, maybe his sisters, maybe his cousins, maybe his aunties and uncles. Um, the least you can do is respect these guys. Even if you didn't want them, <clears throat> Jordan, you could have at least respected the young man and said, you know what? Behind the scenes, I didn't really care to have uh, a young guy on the team. I want a guy with a little bit more skill set or a guy that's a veteran or a guy that's whatever Jordan, Jordan is feeling. Um, but since they have you here and they're not going to trade you, I'm going to treat you with respect, young man, and I'm going to show you the ropes because I'm on my way out the door in the NBA and I want to see you be successful. That's what a real stand-up black man would be doing for another young black brother that's coming into the league that's just trying to find his way. 
y'all working this young man out. Y'all worked that young man out. Y'all overworked him, put him in the game. He was already wore out, and then when his numbers didn't produce, uh, you guys traded him all over the league. And then he never had that opportunity to really, really set in like a Kobe Bryant did to sit and watch and learn for guys in front of him. So he's he's itching to get on the court because he's been watching guys and watching guys and watching guys. Now he feel like I'm the one. I'm ready to go out there and show him what I can do because he had time to sit and be a student of the game. You've seen it in football. Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre and was a student of the game. Though Brett Favre didn't really give him the, nur the, the nurturing of a, of a veteran guy as well, he was able to sit. Aaron Rodgers was still sit, able to sit, learn the system, learn guys before him, watch the way guys move, and then stepped in and became Aaron Rodgers in football. You've seen it with Kobe Bryant. He was able to sit and watch and learn, and then when it was his number to be called, he was ready to go, and he became Kobe Bryant. Kwame Brown wasn't dealt that hand. When he came into the league, these guys wanted somebody else. Michael Jordan was the voice of the league. Uh, he's still kind of, he's still a voice of the league, you know what I'm saying? And he's not even playing no more. That goes to tell you what he was going into a Wizards organization coming off of six championships with the Chicago Bulls and being Michael Jordan, right? To take that young man and not nurture him and say, you know what, young man, I didn't really care. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really care to have a young guy on the team because I'm kind of older in the league, man. I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, compete. I wanted some guys with some different skill sets or some more veteran guys, right? But at the same time, you're a young man and you come into this league and I know, I know you're just trying to provide for your family. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you're successful and then I'm going I'm to check out the league. You know what I'm saying? That's what, what a real stand-up brother would have did. But you guys comment below. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this story. Hit the like button right now. Please share this video. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn me up. Turn on the post notifications. And um, yeah, share this video and tell me what you guys think.